communicate in such a way that the, the person that you're communicating to receives that in as effective a manner as possible. And um, how many of you know that if you think someone is being nasty to you, you won't receive the information very well because uh, it'll go through the filter of your emotions first. Um, so you don't know. People can't read your mind when you say, let's say you send a text and it says, um, uh, you guys, I don't know, uh, people, we need uh, more professionalism. Let's say that. Um, now, maybe you, you intended that for two people, but 30 people read that, and five of them who it's not intended for are triggered because you don't understand and that's what I'm going to share today about loving one another dearly, is you don't understand the, the principle of the inner voice. So look at someone next to you, or you can say it to me or whatever, and say, we all have an inner voice. That inner voice reads a text in a particularly perceived manner. So let's say you're very secure, you've dealt with people, you know the person, when they send a thing that says, uh, guys, we need to be more professional, you'll read as, guys, we need to be more professional. And you're like, cool, I agree. But if you read it, and guys, we need to be more professional. That inner voice, who's noticed when you read things, you're, you're play acting in your mind on behalf of the person who sent you the message. So you as the person who sends the message have to make sure that that message you send cannot be interpreted in any other way other than the intended spirit of that message. So how do you do that? Sometimes it means you've got to type longer. Sometimes it means you've got to add a little smiley face. Sometimes it means you've got to add a little heart. You know, sometimes it means you've got to go to all the necessary effort to make sure that the way the message you communicate is received is Love one another dearly. Did you get that? So when I communicate with you right now, what is my goal? Is my goal to make you angry or to get you to receive the message? So if I come up here and I say, guys, it's pathetic the way you people speak to each other. And then everyone's looking around saying, Who's, which one of us people is you people? Which one? You know? It's really pathetic. You know, you need to blah, 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 blah. Now, if my goal is for you to receive the message, I've just destroyed it completely. What does the whip produce? Liars, better liars. When you whip somebody, they've got one priority in their relationship with you, and that's they don't want to be whipped anymore. So, if people feel whipped by you, they're going to hide from you and they're going to lie to you every time. Because if God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, who gives us a spirit of fear? The devil and people. You, without realizing it, could be giving somebody a spirit of fear. Even with a joke. You'll never hear me crack a negative joke about another human being to another human being. I'll never joke about uh, the way you look. I'll never joke about uh, the way you dress. I'll never joke about violence. I'll never joke about those things because I've learned. And, and this is an example of how I learned. Our youth pastor's wife, it was his um, thousand years ago. It was his fiance. She used to call me ugly the whole time and stupid and she was joking, right? And then, uh, am I live? Oh, thanks for telling me. When did I go live? Oh, five minutes. Okay, I'll do a recap for everybody who's listening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, okay, so our, our youth pastor's wife, I mean, she used to call me stupid and she wouldn't even call me by my real name. 
gave me some other name. Um, not a terrible name, just not my name. I don't want to give too much detail in case she ever listens to this. And, and I want to get into another war because you know, she's now a senior pastor's wife. Same guy. But, <laughs> you know, like, I'm pretty humphrey. Yeah. But anyway, okay. So, um, so one day I got tired of it and I was still in school. I was about 17 or something. And I just got tired of being jokingly called, you know, in Afrikaans, the word for um, ugly is lelik. And she always used to say, hey, lelik, you know. <laughs> you know, or if I liked a girl and then I'm chatting to the youth pastor, then, you know, his fiance would, would say, um, jokingly, you know. Uh, ach, nee, man. Uh, Waar gaan een lelike oost is jy een mooi vrou soos die kry? You know, like, yeah, where's an ugly guy like you going to get a pretty girl? Now, in her mind, because I've got an outgoing personality, and maybe in her mind, she maybe thought I wasn't that ugly. She thought I can handle this because in her mind, I'm ladies man 592. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, in her mind, everybody say, my mind is usually wrong. When people say, you know, I've got excellent discernment, I worry about them immediately. When someone tells me they can discern people, I, I like use an 80 foot pole and stay away from them because I, I get nervous about them. Because when anybody who thinks they know anybody, for me, is a fool. <laughs> I stay far away from you. I've said that before. Great for you. I'm glad you can discern people, but I fear you. You know why? Because people who say they can discern people, I think it's a bit of arrogance. Can you, can you discern people? Maybe. It's better to be obedient to the word than to assume that you know people. And, you know, so as I get older, you know, I assume that she's not a nasty person because she's ministry. She helps people. I'm, I'm going out on a limb. Back then I thought, you know, where does she keep her broom? And I thought this woman flies around at night, you know, because she was so nasty to me. <laughs> but for her, it was probably playful. So, you know, Afrikaans culture is very playful. It's a very playful culture. And, uh, but I tell you, I already felt ugly. I already, when I looked in the mirror, who's felt ugly? And then you look in the mirror and then you, you see like your nose looks like five kilometers long and your ears look like you can flap all around. And no one else cares because they don't stare at your nose. Or stare at your ears they see the hole and if you're this beautiful spirit all they see is a glow you know if you've got a beautiful spirit looks don't matter at all because you outshine it's like if you're a beautiful person with an ugly spirit you need a, a thug like a neanderthal you know, <laughs> to love you because all they can see is your looks shallow like a splash pool <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah like that but uh, but you feel ugly. So whether someone is ugly or not is irrelevant. How they feel is their reality. And I felt ugly already and she was cracking these jokes the whole time. So now I thought, because, you know, she's like most popular girl at school when she was at school. She's the sportiest, the academic, very pretty girl, like very, very pretty. 11 out of 10, you know. Like, very, very pretty. So she was ragging into me one day, and I said, Yes, you always say stuff about me. Have you seen your nose? Now, she's been laying into me for two years. And I say, Have you seen your nose? She starts crying. Like the world falls apart. Elders have to speak to me about how I'm insensitive. I'm in so much trouble. My youth pastor, who was my friend, is like upset at me. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> because I assumed. So let's not, because you never answer evil with evil. That's one lesson I learned. Never, ever, ever answer evil with evil. And number two, never assume that someone is confident or uh, secure enough to handle a negative joke. Never make that assumption. Ever. Ever, ever. Everybody say ever, ever. Because it doesn't fall under love one another dearly. Love one another sensitively. Inside the kingdom of God, when we communicate with each other, 
Who are we communicating with? Who's, who's our target market? So Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are confident and secure, who are wealthy and good-looking. Is that what he said? No. He says, Come unto me, all you who are weary, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach the good news to the rich, to the wholehearted, eh? to give recovery of sight to people who can see. You know, so the kingdom of God, no, see, that's not what it says. It's, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to mend the broken heart, to set the captives free, recover your sight to the blind, spiritually blind, physically blind. You know, like, like the, 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 our target market, if you look at the people around you, people who come into the kingdom, that's us. We are a broken, limping, wounded, insecure, weak bunch. Eh? And, and God doesn't forsake the righteous, but the devil picks on them. And so does the world. It is the nature of the world to attack good people, kind people. They get abused and used. I tell you, the world, you know what the world calls a righteous person? A sucker. Naive. Easy to fool. Because we're so trusting and loving. So we get used and abused. And there's people who shamelessly use us. Oh, go there. Those guys are easy, man. Just ask them for money. Just tell them it's for children. They'll give you some money. There are shameless devils out there. And they abuse people. Now, so now, yeah, we are in the kingdom of love where we're instructed to love one another dearly, to be sensitive with each other, kind to each other. Now, what happens if we try and bring corporate mentalities in here? where we're harsh with each other, impatient with each other, nasty to each other, where we send horrible messages to each other, where we aren't sensitive about how we communicate a thing. See, I'm not on any WhatsApp groups and stuff, but every now and then someone sends me uh, the, the stuff. And then I'm like, okay, well, let me just pray that the Holy Spirit will give our entire team the wisdom to be sensitive when we message each other. I know sometimes in meetings, when I, like if I'm not present, I know people talk over each other sometimes and shut each other down and humiliate each other. And, you know, um, and when people come to chat to me about it, I say, just remember, weary, heavy laden, uh, there's broken people here. They don't yet know. What do broken people do? What's their nature? Broken people? Break people. Whole people heal people. Wise people win people. He who wins souls is wise. So if you want to determine where you're at in the biblical scale of child or adult, it's if you're cracking negative jokes, if you're lording it over people, if you're trying to dominate uh, conversations, if you're not sensitive when you communicate, you're still spiritually a child in many areas of your life. But uh, if you want to know if you're reaching the apotheosis of spiritual maturity, which is the highest evolution or development of spiritual maturity, you'll know that your entire life is consumed with how other people feel and you don't care about how you feel anymore. Because all you care about is winning souls. Wisdom has overtaken you completely. So, so as we sit here, and st so who would? So let's say one is still snipping a bit like a dog and struggling a bit. You, you're still shifting and and turning from dog to human, from dog to son. And ten is uh, you're unshakable. You, you, all you care about is other people. And it doesn't matter what they say, you're going to love them anyway. So who would put themselves at one to four? Is it? That's fine, yeah. You still, yeah. 
That's good because then you know where you are. So who else? Who, like, yeah, be honest. It's, I'm not going to fight with you or humiliate you. That's good. So who would say you're in one to four? You're still biting and snipping and struggling a little bit. Yeah, it's a couple of hands. Great. Okay. Who would say you're kind of middle of the road? You're figuring this out. You know, you're like you're four to seven, let's say. I put myself at around about seven-ish, you know. And who reckons they're nailing this thing, seven to ten, where you only, you, there's no, you're nailing it. Yeah, so is Tanya getting nice and kind? I think we must have an anonymous evaluation form for, for anybody in our ministry to rate our HODs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like rate your HOD. Uh, <laughs> yes, that'll be horrible, eh? Because you know, some people start factions and say, when you rate Tanya, she, I think she's getting a little bit arrogant. You know, rate her. Uh, it's like um, we we were, yes, we were all like our first year little Bible st- colleges, Bible students. There, we had this uh, part-time study thing at the church. And then we each had a, remember when we each had a turn to preach for 10 to 15 minutes? I don't remember that. And then up we go. And I use my charisma and I, and I make everybody laugh. And then I'd say, okay, now we're going to pray. And, you know, I managed to get an altar call in my 15 minutes. <laughs> I was very driven for soul winning. And then afterwards, uh, the senior pastor, Pastor Martin, he's passed away now. He's such a wonderful man. He's, he comes to me and he says, that was very good, but if you let it go to your head, everything you do going forward will be very bad. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I can already see that you're a little bit arrogant. <laughs> I just come off the stage. <laughs> so in Afrikaans, so, you know, <laughs> that was by a good. So I got, he enjoyed the message, but my character is in question. <laughs> I'd love to say I was offended, but I was, I was like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like dumb and dumber, you know, when the, when the lady says, there's, what, if, if there was a million, if you're the last guy on earth, I don't know what she said to him, but it was like no chance that he can get a date with her. And she said, all he hears is, there's a chance, <laughs> you know, that's what I heard. You thought it was good. <laughs> the rest of my questionable character, I didn't hear. I was too young and arrogant. <laughs> you thought it was good. <laughs> didn't hear any of the negative stuff. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how we ended up there. But um, <laughs> standard operating procedure lately, eh? Yeah, Corin says, never, uh, uh, never a true word spoken in jest. Words hurt or heal. Yeah. You know, often you, you, you crack a joke. Um, yes, uh, I don't know. Someone cracked a joke. With, you know, I don't like it when people touch me in any way without my permission or my initiation. Especially if someone jokingly grabs my neck, or you know, what I'm saying, you know, when someone like grabs your neck, and you know, um, I don't, I, I don't, I was bullied relentlessly in primary school, and that's why I fell in love with fighting. Because when I learned I could defend myself, I wanted to defend everybody, and then I, you know, and then it just became fun and a sport, and it was a way for me to control my anger issues. So I don't like it, and and. Um, through the years in ministry and stuff, there's always these youth pastors who, you know, had these tiny little, teeny little egos, you know, <laughs> always something to prove. Was that a big ego? You know, like always something to prove. And then they kind of grab your neck and, and, you know, joke and like, you know, exert this kind of, yeah, it's like show you how strong they are, you know. And then I laugh and punch them under the arm if your arm's over here, then I just go, Dong! <laughs> and then under, if you punch someone under here, the whole arm goes, it's attached to your funny bow. So it's terrible. It's very sore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I never meant that. I exactly meant it. I exactly knew where to hit him. Because <laughs> they don't know. They, they think they're being fatherly and playful, but they don't know what you've been through because... 
in Christianity especially, we've got a problem where we don't know how to love one another dearly. It's a discipline to be so sensitive to what other people, you don't know what other people have been through. Telling someone to grow a thicker skin is called gaslighting. It's what narcissists do. So in that moment, you're being narcissistic. You might not be a narcissist, but in that moment, when you've hurt someone and they let you know, listen, I don't like it when you say that. You're not loving that person dearly. When, when you know, again, another ministry, if the pastor just shouted at us all the time. Eh? Yes, like the old, he's just shouting at us. And then the one day I'm like, um, like, you know, when you've got that gap to have a conversation, I say, I would very much like to be excused from the staff meetings because I've got a severe anxiety problem and it's, it's a little bit rough for me. I'll do anything, you know, you can chat to me one-on-one. -on -one. And then he's like, no man, just get over it. <laughs> not everything is about you. I'm not talking to you. So, but how am I supposed to know? You know those general... Who's been in businesses where everybody gets shouted at because of what one guy does? Now you don't know if it's you. And we're all in trouble. You know? Then you get threatened with your job. You know, like, yeah, then, they, then they say stuff like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I should just let half of you go. You know, you know like, stuff like that. And I'm sitting there. I had such a vicious anxiety attack the one day that my blood pressure went up and my nose started bleeding. Who's ever experienced that before? You know, you like like it was so bad i could my heart was hitting so bad that like it, it was like a this mega palpitation and i'm sitting there and it's a pastor and then i you know i went to the toilet and my nose was bleeding and i was like doing that heave cry you know <laughs> like absolute breakdown because i'm just not wired for that my response to someone shouting at me is I leave the room or we dance. <laughs> you know, let's talk more action. That was, you know, that's my, I'm wired like that. I don't even know why God put me in 2022. I feel like I should have been born in the Viking age where I could just hit someone in the head with an axe and then our conversation is solved or just stick him with a sword or, you know, oh, you're a rapist. I can solve that problem in under three seconds. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're a corrupt official. You're still from the poor. Ah, oh, that, that problem can end quick, quick. You know, <laughs> that's how I'm wired. Now, now I'm a born-again Christian. I've got no response. I have to internalize all my desires to beat you to a little pulp. And you grab my neck, or you call me ugly, or you call me stupid. And you don't realize the person sitting next to you has different responses. Some people just want to crawl under the bed and die every time they hear you speak. Some people just look at you and think. I was talking to a bunch of farmers the once, and I said, you know what we should do? I said, why don't all of you here let your mothers go and work for a black person and let that black person swear your mothers and treat them like trash and see how you feel about it? Because that's what you do to their mothers, and you wonder why they want to kill you on your farm. Obviously, I wasn't very popular. How about, you swear, how about I swear your brother or your sister or your wife? Eh? Swear Kathy, Pastor Kathy, and see what happens to you. Between Coach Carl and Jaden... There'll be a lot of repenting. <laughs> and I'll say, no repentance required. Because <laughs> why? We don't understand the importance of loving people dearly. You look at my garage. It looks like I'm a bicycle collector because my kids have got friends. So I'm like, we, if the friends there, I feel very ill in my tummy if one person's riding a bicycle and the other one can't ride a bicycle. So we get a bunch of bicycles. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm like looking and I'm thinking, yes, we need, I need a freaking storehouse because if I was going to have a lot of friends, if she ever gets a, I'm sure she's going to get like a little off-road bike at some point. That's a, just how she operates. And I'm thinking all the little things that, because all her, uh, she's got a lot of wealthy side dads and stuff, you know, <laughs> bonus dads. I can just imagine when she goes to stay by that uncle, then she'll come back with a motorbike. And now I'm like, oh no, I've got to buy two motorbikes. Three motorbikes. How many friends she's got? You know? Because I incapable, in my brain now, after listening to the words of Jesus for six and a half years, I'm incapable of not loving people dearly. It's a discipline. And because the fear of the God is, is God, not the God, God, the one God is in me. I fear. I fear disappointing the nature of his kingdom. So when we're not sensitive, if someone perceives that you're rude, you were rude. Tell the person next to you. If someone perceives that you were rude, you were rude. It's not, well, that's like your opinion, man. If someone comes to you and said, I feel like you were very rude to me, your response is not, I was not, because now you're rude again. <laughs> what, is, what is the correct love somebody dearly response if someone says, I feel like you were rude to me? I'm so sorry. How can I fix this? It's not my intention. Try and, you don't justify the behavior. You try and say yeah, I think I, I might have been a little bit frustrated and then it came out wrong. I'm sorry I brought it out on you. I should not have done that. Here, have my car. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Please tell me somebody's learning something. Huh? Love one another dearly. Now, you know, you can be rude to Mandy. I don't have to step in. I just say, God be with you. <laughs> but if she comes to me, you and I are going to have a chat. She knows she mustn't involve me in fights that she started. But if you started it, you know, there was a, there was a, uh, a boss that made Mandy cry the once. A very high ranking director in a mega hundred million rand a year company. And she came to me and said, This person did this and this and this. I was like, Come with me now. And you can ask her, I got Mandy by the hand, dunk, 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 into that director's office. And I say, Hey, you do not speak to my wife like that I mean her eyes are like this big I said there's work things and if we if you want to have a problem with me after hours for the rest of your life I said this is not your employee it's not your minion the first thing this is, is this is another man's wife I can't beat a woman but I can make it unbearable for her to work in the same space as me. It's like a lot of the men over there. Like one guy, well, look, a lot of the guys made sexual comments. It's a, it's a secular environment about Mandy. And then I was like, that's good. That's cool. That's, I can, I'm fine with it. You know, I don't drive a, you don't drive a Ferrari because you don't want anybody to see how cool it is. You know what I'm saying? But like the one guy made a bit of a comment, uh, you know, what he'd like to do. And I said, you do realize that's my wife? I said, I tell you what, I'm going to go for a wee. When I get back, I want to hear your excellent apology. <laughs> and he's like, what are you going to do? I said, HR. <laughs> I'm not going to physically assault you. We are going to HR. I'm going to make your life unbearable. Now, what do you think 
goes through someone's mind when you are a little bit nasty to their wife or their sister. So remember, you're working with people's wives, sisters, daughters, brothers. What do you think when they go home and talk about the rough day they had? You build resentment towards yourself. You build resentment like there's an army of extended family waiting for you to bump their car, see you in a bar, bump into you with checkers. Do you know what I'm saying? Nobody gets away with anything. You always think you do. There's a pastor of a church in Boxburg. He's so funny. I'm not going to say who because he, he'll be ministering here in probably next year or so. In his past. I mean, someone at church, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was in Club J days. Someone was just a little bit funny with his girlfriend. It's his wife now. They waited. Him and his family waited like three years. <laughs> Yeah, they were very patient. I think they might be Greek. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I think they might be, yeah. I mean, the Greek families are like, you know, what do you say about me? All the guys, Jim. I think if they, if they, I think when a mosquito plugs into one of those guys, he comes out like, like, you know, muscular mosquito. He goes, <laughs> and they waited. Must have been three years there. Eh? And then they caught that guy. And then he received a, a bit of family teaching. You know? I, I want to encourage you. That's why Jesus says, God is not mocked. He has built the world in such a way that whatever you sow, you reap. And he has the principles about seed time and harvest time. You always reap after you sow. You always wait before you reap. There's a time of terror. <laughs> Am I going to reap? And you always reap more than you sow. You want to love one another dearly because every word is seed. Every tone of voice is seed. Jesus grew in stature and wisdom and favor with God and with man. He knew who to be rude to. He knew who to confront. That's the spirit of might. But the rest of the time, he flowed in compassion. So every morning, it's like yesterday morning, I went to my spiritual cupboard because I had to have a, a very tough conversation with 40 or 50. Was there 50? Yeah, 40 beautiful students. Every one of them, I mean, one or two of them a little difficultish, but still beautiful. Still, I had to speak to them in the knowledge that one or two of them are going to try and stir up trouble because they're influenced by an external factor. And I said, Holy Spirit, what must I clothe myself with to speak to these beautiful students? And the Holy Spirit said, put on your mantle, your cloak of compassion. And so when I spoke to them, I don't know, does, some of you students were there. Did you feel any compassion coming off me? I don't know. Was there compassion there? Eh? that's what I wanted to flow in because I was like how am I going to love these beautiful kids dearly and that's, how, that's the question when I write a message to someone do they feel loved dearly am I being dear to them it's another pastor who calls when he's angry at you calls you my dear who knows about stuff like that listen my dear and then I said listen because I saw him in uh, before I moved to the land <laughs> saw him in action with his staff and then I then I chatted to him and I said listen pastor 
You're using that word incorrectly. <laughs> Luckily, we're good friends, and he's, we both receive uh, correction easily from each other. And I said, listen, you're using that word correctly. When you use the word my dear, it must really mean my dear. It means I love you dearly. Not I love you dearly, but. I love you dearly, Matthew, but. What does but mean? Eh? <laughs> Ignore everything I said before the word but. The correct word after the word I love you dearly is and. Or so. If you want to use I love you dearly in a, in a context of rebuking someone, it sounds like this. I, you know that I love you dearly, right? So it's not easy for me to say this to you. See? Not but. <laughs> Is this an uncomfortable topic? Anybody feel like they're sitting on coals here? Now if you wonder, is he talking to me? Yes. Look at the person next to you. Say, he's talking to me. And I want you to say this to the person. He's not talking to you. He's talking to me. So if you wonder, is this you? Yep. And if you want to know if I'm talking to me, I'm talking to me too. Because I'm trying to hit a 10, man, you know. I'm, I, I want to be a son of God, a representative of heaven. <laughs> Thinking, eh? you know, I got this. Now, here's something terrible. This is why I don't play fighting games, like shooting games. I try and stay away from PvP, player versus play activity. There's a game called Call of Duty where they hear what you say the last three seconds, eh? When it plays to the other player, eh? Yeah, is it called Death Comms? Yeah, you're the last like two seconds or something or whatever. So if you shoot me and I die, you then when I die, you hear what I said in that last two seconds. Now, I mean, it's terrible. So when... <laughs> Whenever I die, I, that's why I don't play them anymore. I shout, fight me in real life. <laughs> I shout, your mother's a woman. <laughs> the moment I've, I mean, other guys, whoo. They say terrible things. Can you imagine the terrible things that heathen shout in the last moments of the <laughs> Donald and them always get accused of being a hacker because they play so well. I've never, ever been called a hacker. I can't hit anything. <laughs> if I kill you when we're playing against each other, then it was a mistake. <laughs> a very happy and lucky mistake. But yeah, So it enrages me. So guess what? I don't play. This player versus player, you won't, makes me very upset. Eh? How am I going to love those guys dearly when I'm shouting, fight me in real life? <laughs> fight me in real life. Can you imagine you kill somebody and then you just hear, fight me in real life. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> so when you communicate with a text, <clears throat> are we doing a... Spec, yes, okay. So when you communicate with a text, WhatsApp, on social media, when you talk to people, when you have meetings, your first priority is how will the people receive my message? And I would really like, before every staff meeting, just touch on this, please. Before every thing is, is maybe we must have a standard prayer. Father, Help us to love one another dearly. Because that's what I'm praying over our teams and our international friends. That the Holy Spirit would help us to love one another dearly. Enough to not, you know, because, you know, oh, they know me, they know I'm joking. What's that called? Gaslighting. Because you're saying, it's not my fault you're offended. Grow thicker skin. Grow up. Those terrible things that people say. Love requires maturity. Eh? 
And the less sensitive you are in how you love people, the less mature you are spiritually. Do you got what I'm saying? Now, it's not like we have an epidemic of rudeness here. I mean, people love being here. You know, like I just hear people singing our praises. But I don't know about you. I'm not happy with a five or a six, you know. Imagine this place if we're hitting eights and nines in how we talk to each other. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. That's what we want to hit. And because we're trained in the world to be nasty to each other and insensitive and unkind. Stephen can tell you, he's an internet guy. No one gets, there's two people who get the most flack on earth, the internet guy and the sound guy in a church. <laughs> Who's seen him, you're sitting in church and then there's feedback or something, how like 200 heads just look backwards. Or <laughs> 500 heads or 2,000 heads. If you're at a concert, ee, then like 20,000 heads look backwards. And you're like, <laughs> but, but, but the response you want to multiply clients, eat their nonsense, love them dearly. If we want to grow as overcomers, as a ministry, it's, you know, you know what an atheist is? An atheist is someone who's not met love. Because trying to introduce someone to God, when God is just a figurehead of churchianity, no intelligent being. See, most of us are pretty dumb. We, we'll just buy into churchianity's idol and just worship whatever they tell us to do. But most atheists and agnostics are intellectuals who do exactly what uh, the Bereans did in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. They investigate. They ask difficult questions. And, and if you want to know are we successfully are we successfully uh, representing Jesus atheists will come to love him how what's the marketing campaign to win an atheist by this shall all men know that you my disciples that you love one another because we are not selling a religion we're not selling a church. We are selling love. God is love. If you do not know love, you do not know God. And I've heard ministers preach against that from their pulpits. I don't know if anybody saw one of my Facebook statuses where I said, he has a good idea. <clears throat> <laughs> this is now this is now uh, church and logic. Are you ready? How about you beat someone half senseless for their sin because you want to win them to the kingdom of love? Because you know that's how you win someone over, right? You attack them for their sin. Right? Is that how it works? So how you so you win someone you get you you want to make friends attack everybody. Is that is that does that make any sense on any planet? Eh? You what church do you go to? You call yourself a Christian. Who said who, honest? Who said that before? You call yourself a Christian. Who's ever said that before? Are the hands staying down? <laughs> Donald. <laughs> Donald's like the only honest person in the room here. <laughs> call yourself a Christian. Who's had that said to them before? You call yourself a Christian. You know, like, um, or you have people like, um, uh, I've told the story when I took those three, oh, I was three drunk dudes. I'm trying to remember if it was two or three. Uh, to this uh, so this old Pentecostal church so I can say the name of the church because it was like 27 or 28 years ago so I went to um, fetch a family member out of a bar and he wasn't there 
So I thought maybe he would arrive there. So I sat, drank a glass of Coke and these, I think it was two, I can't remember, two or three drunk dudes are sitting there. And uh, they struck up a conversation with me and they asked, so what do you do? And I say, well, I just started Bible college. I'm in full-time ministry. I'm, you know, I'm at this church, blah, 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 blah. And you know, like drunk people are very interested spiritually. Eh? I, I, I really love Jesus too. Like, I really wish you're a good guy. You know, I want to give my life to Jesus. You know? And you know, and I don't miss an opportunity. <laughs> I don't care if you're drunk or sober. If you tell me you want to give your life to Jesus, we are going now. <laughs> so... So back then, you know, I thought, I'm not going to lead these guys to Jesus here. I want to get them into a church or something. And right across the, from the, what's it, the pig and kettle or pig and whistle or something in Boxburg North. I can't remember what it was called. Right across from us, the Pia Pia Car Church over there on the corner. Remember that one as you drove to the top? Hey? I think it might have been that hotel. At the bottom, there's like a... Yeah, yeah, the pink elephant, yeah. It's like the pig and kettle or something like that. So I got these three guys, and I'm like, there's a big sign at this Pia Pia car, which is a, it's a kind of conservative, happy clamp, uh, foot stomping, Pentecostal, tongue talking, fire breathing. I thought, that's what these three need. And it says there, Jeugd Samtrek, you know, which is like youth service, united youth service. And I was like, woo! It's Afrikaans. These guys are Afrikaans. Let's get them into the anointing. So I take these guys with me <laughs> across the road. You know, they're kind of la, 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 la. I mean, they, you know, when their breath smells so bad, they can just breathe in your petrol tank and you can go, you know. <laughs> like <a> really drunk. Eh? <laughs> 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 Michelle says, what do you do? I do my best. <laughs> so what do you do for a living? Anyway, so I take them across. And now the bottom of that church is full and they've got a balcony because they're having a Yersam track. You know? <laughs> this youth united youth service. Obviously, a lot of PPK churches brought their young people together and they packed that place out. Then we go, so we go upstairs to the balcony and it's kind of half foolish you know enough so that you can see someone come in and the, the pastor just came up now i notice everybody is very smartly dressed at this year soundtrack at this youth service and i'm in a pair of jeans and i think knowing me back then a pair of sneakers and a t-shirt and probably a cap either back to front or forward you know you know, I was one of those dudes that always had a basketball in his car. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and then I got these three drunk guys with me who uh, we sit down and people like move away. And you know, I don't blame them because the fumes coming off them. I mean, if someone lit a match, you, afterward people would have to come to the site with hazmat suits. I mean, it was <laughs> they got a proper drunk. <laughs> and they're sitting there with me and they're like, Hallelujah! You know, they're clapping and the guys are, you know, like a, oh, you know, I want to love the Lord. I'm singing like that. Yes, and it's like, it's running on. And ooh, these guys are crying. And the music beautiful. And this guy just goes up there. He stops the music, this guy. And I'm like, here it comes. And thank you, Holy Spirit. These, two, these three are going to be sober in the next five seconds. Because I've seen that before, you know, when people get into the presence of God and there's a revival atmosphere, they go from drunk to sober, you know, like immediately. And I'm like, this is the moment. This is the moment. That church had no love one another dearly. <laughs> Zero chill. <laughs> that guy. I'm going to say it in Afrikaans because it sounds cooler and then I'll say it in English. <laughs> he goes... He stops that praise and worship. Stop, 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 stop. Not even an organ, not a piano. He just says, stop, 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 stop. And then he points at the balcony. And I'm like, come on, Lord. This is it. This is it. 
And then he goes, Dat jong mensen, aan die huis van die jere, aan die jeanbroek en kom. So in English, it's like, that young people come into the house of the Lord wearing denims. And he goes off until we leave. That guy was so angry at us for coming in there. And my cap, dear God in heaven. And a hoot. A hoot. That's a hat in Afrikaans. He shouted at us. I sat there. I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I've just caused these three guys to stumble. God's going to throw me into a moat with a, with a millstone tied around my neck. I mean, how? <laughs> how are we going to win people for the Lord <laughs> when we're shouting at them and angry at them? Hey, Talk young man, sir. Eh? That young people come into the house of the Lord wearing denims. <laughs> I mean, then he looks around, like, at, you know, for support at all the elders and everything, you know, like, incred, incred, what's it called? Incredulously. Have you heard that word before? He's like, in, it's like, I can't believe it. That's when something's incredulous. Like, what? It's like absolutely offended that like, we're sitting. It, like, I'm sitting there. I just want these guys to give their life to Jesus. Now, so, I can actually continue that story. And if you want to know what happened, those three guys went back to the bar and I went home. <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, I was sharing the gospel. I can swear yammer. I can swear yammer. I can swear yammer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> the one guy was like, near peep, out of peep, 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 Christina, peep, 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 peep. I actually saw me here, fucking on peep. I said, I'd come, I said, don't peep, peep, peep. He's like saying, you know, I'll peep, peep, wait for that guy to come out and I'll peep, peep. I'll show him a gene brook, peep, peep, peep. Yes, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. I shut them back into their church, you know, into the, the, into the church of the spirits, you know. <laughs> yes, he was like, it was a disaster. And now, yes, something is funny. That same year, our youth pastor says, we're going to a youth soundtrack. <laughs> we're going to a youth service, <laughs> like a united youth service. So we're all excited. Eh? Here we go. And I had these two gangsters I used to hang out with, Nikki and Barty. <laughs> like we all go there. And we're driving up to Boxburg North. And as we, because we were on the other side of Boxburg, and as we <laughs> go closer and closer to Boxburg North, I'm like starting to think, oh, are we going there? <laughs> and as we get closer and closer, so I'm not in the car with Pastor Justice. He's, he's ahead. There's a convoy. We went everywhere in convoys and buses. It was so cool. And then, and then we stopped there. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and they had a different speaker that night. But I tell you, that guy shouted us until all of us came forward and gave our life to Jesus. All the youth leaders, the youth, all of us just, let's just go forward so this guy can shut up. Because <laughs> we couldn't leave. If we leave, the place is empty. We rock up there like with 150 youth. You know what I mean? Like, like so like, they shouted at us. Same thing. Tinbrook. <laughs> yes, who's been in churches like that? Who's gotten into trouble for not wearing, eh? Yes, you get into fat trouble. It's like, can't believe you aren't wearing your best. So this is um, my message today is, that's not love one another dearly. You know, fighting on WhatsApp or, I'm not saying everybody does it, but I'm telling you, share it with each other. Teach one another. Teach one another that we are part of the kingdom of God and overcomers. We might have a small little corner in the kingdom of God, but it's inexcusable when mature believers don't deal with each other dearly. Love one another 
dearly. So when you communicate, communicate respectfully. I call it being a professional. How am I going to represent the kingdom of God professionally? <laughs> Someone who's left our ministry <laughs> has told me, um, listen, this is not a ministry. We've got to deal with things corporately. And I was like, bruh, what are you saying? I pray off my life away. What do you mean this is not a ministry? This is a ministry, ministry, ministry as ministry can get. <laughs> so before you say, well, actually, this isn't a ministry. It's more of an NGO. We are totally a ministry and we're part of the church of God. We might be the toenail or we might be the left butt cheek. I don't mind whatever God has made us. One of the eyelashes. What do you guys, who, who thinks, what, what are we, a nostril? <laughs> we are the nostril in the body of God. <laughs> Whatever we are in that corner, we love one another. Say it. Say it. And when you see that we are not loving one another dearly, Chat to coach, chat to Madalisha, chat to somebody and say, listen, we need to just have a bit of training in that department. We don't snap at each other. Who's got snapping problems? Is anybody here got snapping problems? You tend like every now and then you snap. Eh? Eh? One or two. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you do? I used to have snapping problems. Like you can ask coach Carl, like every now and then. Once every second month now, which is better than it was. Like uh, in Afrikaners have got this great expression, Itor Nyek van die doppie af. Have you ever heard that one? <laughs> die tor fall van die doppie, do, doppie af. So in other words, they say, in, in, in our brain, there's this water level, and then there's this little beer cap floating there, and then there's a little beetle on that... Um, that little beer cap that's pulling your hair to tell you how to think <laughs> the roots of your hair on the inside so when you when you lose it then your little beetle falls off the beer cap and lands in the water <laughs> and splashes around <laughs> then that's you <laughs> you freak out until that thing gets back on the gets control of the inside of your hair again <laughs> anyway amen so thank you so much everybody love you dearly i think um who's are we going to do a breakdown Anari. Is Anari being interviewed now? Oh, you guys are going to have a good time. So so let's get everybody who's taking over from me onto the thingy. Because otherwise there's going to be dead air. Well, what's happening now? Yeah, is that going to happen? Yeah, so thank you to our staff. Uh, thank you for giving me an extra 10 minutes against your will. I love you all very, very dearly. Uh, to everybody around the world, we're going to be going live still for another hour or so, maybe longer. Um, with interviews and um, uh, Bible study. So I encourage you to stick around. And um, please partner with us. You know, it's winter right now. Uh, those of you intercessors, please pray with us. We still got to raise at least 150,000 Rand. That's somewhere around 9,000 US dollars um, to uh, hit our shortfall as a ministry. Um, we, we are, it's very, very challenging to make a, a, a difference in kids' lives. And we need to buy jackets. We need to do all sorts of things. So please, please, please pray for us. Pray for breakthrough. Pray for help. Um, I'm just waiting for the team to sit down at the table. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, so I don't know. So the scripture today is love one another dearly. Um, did you find where it was? Uh, you're going to find it. Okay, thank you, Tanya. Okay, so I'm all excited. A lot people who are a lot prettier than I am are about to be on camera. <laughs> Less Vikingy. <laughs> so I'm checking the comments here. Did you guys learn anything? Did you receive anything? Let me read you. Hey, cat. There's Karen. There's Twinkie Poo. Obviously, Tanya, Alex. Yo, Tank, Theopolis, Lebote, Pizzo. Who's that? <laughs> That's an awesome name, man. Eh? Is that your dude? My man. 
With a name like that, he's like the legend, the original. Hey, Susie. What up, Susie? She was in the hall, yeah. Now she's probably commenting. And... Hey, this can be high. Tank, Theopolis, Lebote. Lebote. Is that how I pronounce it? Lebote. Pizza. Dude, with a name like that, you better be able to dance. <laughs> or DJ, or do something. You know, like <laughs> like a bass guitarist or something, <laughs> or wrestle, or MMA fighter or something. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> fighting <laughs> out of the red corner, <laughs> Tank, <laughs> the Opulus, the Potter Pizza. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> then he bounces like the Huntington Beach bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, eh? Awesome, Karen. Eh? What does it say? No, it, it actually says dearly on one of them. Let me have a look here. La, 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 la. See, I've got internet again, yeah. Love one another dearly. I'm going to find the scripture quickly. <gasps> no internet. Ach, man. What am I not connected to over here? Let me see. Oh, it's connected to the XR16. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be O triple A three, yeah? Oh, okay. Okay, Chinos is connecting me now. I'll help find that scripture. Yes, Pastor Bongani, you are very awesome. Pastor Mashlaku. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's this young lady's name? What's your name? Tandiwe. So nice to see you around all the time, man. Yes, you got such an awesome spirit. Tandiwe. <laughs> okay. Right. Let me try that again. Love one another. Love one another. Yes. Dearly. I pay it so huge. I'm glad I got big hands. <laughs> uh, it's, would it be Paul who said that? <laughs> what does the Bible say about love one another dearly? Come on. Are you serious? Dearly? Eh? I'm hunting it, I'm hunting it. Mm -hmm. Just finding the scripture, man. If someone out there also, if you've read that scripture, where was it? I read it before I came here, man. Uh, and many times before that, yeah. Um, Okay, well, I guess Ephesians 4 verse 2 will do the job. It says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. That'll, it'll handle that same message. If I, when I find that love one another dearly, it must have been a translation that's not very popular. Okay, are, are the gangsters ready behind me? Tank in a house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. I see you're on camera. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Love you all. So you can go to www. Uh, let, let's just go to edcc.africa. We've got some challenges on our overcomers.co.za site um, uh, for giving options. You, you can find some nice giving options there if you want to uh, help us. Remember, our goal is to raise between three and 5,000 rand a day to keep doing what we're doing. That's three to $500. And um, obviously, we've got a quite a serious deficit this month. So, if you've got, you know, you gangsters who've got uh, money hidden in your bed, mattresses, you know, I'm sure you're not sleeping comfortably. Just like send it, man. Let's feed some kids, take care of people. We just stepped out in faith and emptied out our, our bank accounts and stuff. So we've got a very scary is the wrong word, but you know, there's a bit of pressure. <laughs> so please, yeah, think of us, pray for us. Um, love you all dearly. Have a wonderful potato. Oh, there's a comment from Kat. Oh, that's nice. Love one another deeply. I'll, I'll take deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. That's 1 Peter 4 verse 8. So you can choose between those two scriptures. Okay. Thanks, Kat. Kat, you're such a legend. Can't wait to have Kat live. Have we got a date for that? Oh, we got to sort out the Zoom thing. The Zoom, okay. I've already I bought Zoom and everything, so we just need to. Oh, we got to set that thing up with a PC or something. Or what's going on for that TV? Okay. 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 Should be able to. You should be able to use my Facebook to log in. I think. Yeah, you can try it, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Love you all dearly, man. And ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the the three the three must be awesomes, which is like musketeers but awesomer. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, all yours. Hello everybody, welcome to Overcomers Re-Church Sessions. Um, today I got my wonderful presenter and our visitor, I got Courtney here. And I got Anari, our lovely guest, Anari. Um, well, I just wanted to greet the band, uh, greet the media out here and the people watching. Uh, sure guys. Um, so Anari, we, we, actually, we actually, you know, happy to have you here, you know. How are you feeling right now? Well, I was told to be here. <laughs> I just hope you're not forced to be here. Something like that. <laughs> well, you know, everyone yeah, has to say yeah, you're awesome. Yeah. So, Courtney. Yes. Sure. I, I want to know, with these, um, with these sessions, are you learning anything so far? I am. And at Overcomers, you learn every day. Yeah. <laughs> You learn every hour with every meeting. Mm. It's something new. Mm -hmm. Something new. And what would you say love means to you? Love means Jesus. And it's not just love. Love is love is put in different ways. It's when they say love people like you love God, it's okay, would you have to love people? in every area you don't mm -hmm. just yeah. love in one area yeah, legit. Mm -hmm. you love in a general it's yeah. I, I love you it's no i love mm. you because of who you are i love you because different categories depending on different people but you don't just love a person love isn't just love it's yeah, yeah. it's not it's just a action. word uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh okay so well, this, this this question um it, it has been buzzing on right yeah. um in my head um so I wanted to ask every person this question <laughs> today you know but I don't quite get the time I was like you know what let me save it for later so I wanted to know ne how does actually not not as an individual but let me just put it like this <laughs> how do you feel the moment you step out of overcomers like the moment you step out of the gate how do you feel. What, to go home exactly yeah disappointed yeah. <laughs> i would really say disappointed sure yeah. i wouldn't say exciting yeah because this is home yeah this is it has been since we got here and it's been you get up and you're like excited and ready to go but it's disappointing going home you know mm -hmm. yeah you go home to your family but my family's here yeah my husband and my kids and 
my mom and everybody's here, but I've gained so many family members yeah. Yeah. in here. So it's, yeah. it's really yeah. nice staying. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Really I want to know your answer to that. Though. Yeah. How, How do, do you, you feel? Because you're like, out of the three of us, you're the newest here. So, yeah. but guys, we're interviewing Anna I know like, hey. it doesn't matter. Hey. How do you feel when you go home? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me answer that now. Okay, I'm just doing for you guys. <laughs> okay, so the moment I I walk out of the gate, I feel different, honestly. You know, I feel like oh, I'm out, and you know what. I'm stuck. What's next? You yeah, know? Because yeah. when I'm in here, I operate. I'm saying yeah. I work, I yeah. move, I legitly bounce. And I'm saying, so I'm always on my tiptoes. But the moment you just get out of there, you feel like, ah, and I'm going to meet this harsh world, you yeah. know? Apart from going home to sleep, because, like, exactly. yeah, we're tired. Exactly. Yeah. So. But yeah, being away from here. Is be, be, being away from here is, is it's a pretty, pretty, pretty hard challenge because, like, it's like, hey, welcome to the new world, hey? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but it only Where everybody exists, can yeah. do anything they want to you <laughs> yeah. or say anything they want to you. But being in here is actually about love and love is just, you know, being cherished so wonderfully in here that you feel like, you know what, Whew, this is heaven. Yeah, people yeah. don't care about your feelings, are they? Yeah. They yeah, and we're care. taught to respect yeah. Yeah. Uh, like every Legit. little thing. Yeah, it's love each other because you're a family. Love mm-hmm. each other because mm-hmm. you love God. Yeah. Out there, it's like, I don't care. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who are you? <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's who are you? Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, An actual honor. interest. Oh, okay, yeah. Honor. Yeah, mm-hmm. not just like I, who are you, let's mm-hmm. like, Yeah, it's about honor. You honor each other. Mm-hmm. No matter your ranking, you honor. You mm-hmm. honor, yeah. Out there. Savage. No, honorless world, sure. Savage out there. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So we get that. Yeah. So you mind um, telling the views out there? Um, what's actually your 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 work position in overcomings? Besides being position? holy and being in the ministry <laughs> and worshiping so hard for Jesus Christ, you know. Um, yo, what is my work? <laughs> I say mainly there's, um, there's, coaching. Yeah. yeah, but there's I'm involved in different aspects of this ministry. I'm uh, I'm very honored mm. and very pl- privileged yeah. to. Yeah be a PA to mm. both Coach Carl and Pastor Kathy Siliers mm. and it's amazing. really an honor. It's I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> wisdom all day long. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. I have to uh, say. Coach Carl's got a lot amazing, of wisdom, eh? An amazing <laughs> job. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a part of the Beer River group, the, the Overflow, mm-hmm. and we help feed people every day, help feed families every day, clothing them, equipping mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. and Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a part of the catering. I'm a part of the <laughs> pantry. I'm a part of the kitchen. I'm yeah. Every aspect, there's a little bit that yeah. I'm a part of. Yeah. Whoa. You find um, that like the family here are mm-hmm. often everywhere. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like so, you don't just have a job site. <laughs> yeah, wow. everything comes back to us. Both Mavis and myself, everything mm. comes back to us. Yeah. Each event, each um, mm. gathering, everything comes back to us. And it's sure. that mm-hmm. little behind the scene action <laughs> that I'm involved in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, well. Oh, wow. It must be quite stressful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you get all that, that love. All that balance. wisdom. Mm. Okay. All the wisdom helps. Yeah. Little snippets every day. Mm-hmm. Like a quick, did you know this? Like, yeah. Coach was telling me today, did you know? I'm like, sure. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. But when Coach asks, did you know? It's like I'm into <laughs> something now. <laughs> but he said to me, um, he told me a story about Judas. Oh, yes. Ooh. And that was very interesting. Every, yeah. okay. Wow. Okay. Everybody thought Judas was this harsh yeah. dude. Yeah. And he wasn't. Mm-hmm. He was a close friend to Jesus. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> did not die. Thank you. Yeah. Like there's small little things, and yeah, that's yeah. what makes it that's, overcomers. overcomers. That yeah. is kind of like that verse we had the other day, where yeah. you would die for your friends. Yeah, you know, yeah. he loved him so much he betrayed him at will. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's yeah so you talked about that, right? Yeah. So, so tell you later. <laughs> 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 it's a long story. I was all eyes, hey. I was waiting yeah. for the climax. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, energy. Hey, um, so well, I've been. Well, it's kind of a cliche question, yeah. but yeah, you know, um, 
since you've been here, have you have you made friends? <laughs> have you have made you friends? Made friends? Made friends? Yeah. No, <laughs> I have not made friends. I've made family. Ooh. <laughs> can you repeat the code again for that? Can you can you repeat the code for that? I haven't made friends, but I've made family. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. And. Brody, get the background <laughs> screaming, <me>, bro. <laughs> Miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so for, for any of you who are wondering, that little cute Joshi bum who was here the other day with us, this is his mom. Oh, yeah. Mine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My creation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he's so cute. He just exudes love. Wow. Yeah, it's all wow. sorts. So, <laughs> he's supposed to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, for the viewers out there, um, you know, as Anuri has said, you know, um, she she has done a lot, you know, um, for this ministry. You know, she's been donating, uh, you know, giving to the poor, clothing, food, you know, wisdom, prayer, you know, being there for them. And for the for for those who are watching back there, you know, I want you to to, to hit the comments below and tell us like, what did overcomers do for you? You know, it's really important to actually quote it out so that people can know actually what's going on. Because I think, you know, I wouldn't say the majority, but I think some of the people think we might just be, you know, like, ah, these people, they're not doing anything, just acting as mm. if like they're doing something, you know. Yeah. And it's really important, you know, if, if we did something for you out of heart and out of the word Jesus Christ, bring it down low in the comments, you know. And tell us what we did for you, okay? Because it's really important. It's really important for people to know out there, you know, that we're actually working and we're actually serving God, you know, yeah. and His people. Legit, legit. Yeah, yeah but legit, like legit. he said now, that I've done so much for the ministry, it doesn't go by that it's what the ministry has done for me. Yeah. Ooh. That is Ooh. a whole new level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like a point one percentage of anything it's they they care for us as their own children yeah what's the engine boss and mandy they are parents yeah, to they each person all yeah. About parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they i must say that is a big responsibility and it goes back to you showing what the ministry has done for us we it doesn't matter what we do mm -hmm. like yeah we're here to honor them yeah we, it's, we, we're here to honor them yeah. It is. Yeah. It's honor the, pure honor. the change they have brought in our lives. I often imagine them as like a, a big lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This like pulsating light coming out, just sending signals everywhere, being like, hey, all of y'all come <laughs> home. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, I remember the first time we came here, it was just to visit. Mm -hmm. Like, we heard about this place. My mom was telling us, like, comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, everybody was visiting, eh? yeah. yeah. And we ended up That's being how it here. Starts. <laughs> but it was like, before anything was still here. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. been seeing, telling us since she moved here how things has happened, mm -hmm. and like we gotta go, we gotta go. And wow. the first time we came, we walked a prayer path, and Caleb said to me, my husband, he said, "Babe, this is where I want to be for the rest of my life." Right? Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. okay, yeah. sure, and. Later, yeah. God's like, boom, join, boom. <laughs> come do yeah. join us. Yeah. And I must say, that was like, yes, for him. And to me, yeah. it's like, okay. <laughs> like, a lot of thought goes through it, but his first words to me entering this property was, this is where I want to be for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I would not want to change that. Sure. Mm. That's one thing I would never want to change yeah, is yeah, yeah. not being here. Mm. I, I never not want to be here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The trick is, I think it's going to get quite crowded in here soon. Do like. And uh, we're going to have to spread this love outside into saying, the world. We've been <laughs> saying that this ministry is growing rapidly. And, yeah, you know, it's growing really meeting rapidly. New, meeting new faces, you know. Yes. I'm one of those people too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of It's be... nice to have your new face around. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it started with Free Daniel Lisco and it's like... Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been here? A year and five months. Six months. Wow. Okay. Year and six months. A year and a six months. A year and a half. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure it feels longer though. No. Longer and shorter. Mm -hmm. I must say, it's weird. Like, it just <laughs> flew by. 
But then again, if you think about it, a lot has happened. If you flew by, just know that you you had a lot You're of time. You're having a good time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it goes so quick, but if you actually sit down and think, Can't you had that months. and yeah. you had yes. this and that happened and mm-hmm. this, yeah. well, it's insane. Just in a, you know, a short period of time. <laughs> and we have we have the prayer path. Mm. And you sure. know, each and every morning, guys, we disconnect throughout the prayer path. Mm. We'd walk with Mavis and all of them, you know, like disconnecting, passing through the, you know, the garden, down to the river stream. Mm. That's so nice. Across, you know, the moment we finish disconnecting, each and every morning we disconnect, you know, and connect. Yeah. And, connect. and then each and every time, each and every morning we do that, we just feel like. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, Relieved like you could take on anything. We in. We in. Yeah. We doing this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So the big question right now, you know, to you is actually how do how do you feel, you know, going through the the prayer path, basically connecting and disconnecting, you know? Wait. What impact does it? Wait. You're the person who taught me <laughs> the prayer path. The pr- really? Would you be able uh, to explain it? Yeah. Some type of way, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you even know that there's different directions of when you're needing different walking stuff? Walking in faith and walking, and walking in, in trust. In, in tr- oh, yeah, she wants to say yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I'm always trying to tell people, now we can tell the whole world one time. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm wrong about it. Like, well, I don't know the whole thing about if it. If we're wrong, um, correct us, please. <laughs> yeah, so what I do know of it is when you walk it clockwise, mm-hmm. It's you walking in faith. You're speeding your season up because you trusting God so much. That I'm walking in faith, and everything will happen. It's okay. Everything will happen for me. Whoa. And if you walk it anticlockwise, it's you walking in healing. Hmm. You're walking in that trust that God's healing you at that moment. You're slowing your season down to heal. Wow. Yeah. Right. And that's something like the very <laughs> first things that I that I learned I while I was whoa, here. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, that's, makes that's you think about it differently. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. And I imagine everyone's wow. individual journeys, and if you were to see it, like spiraling yeah. around the land, enclosing us in this. You know, I'm even thinking about it. Like, godly rain. I, I, I just love imagine it. you passing this way and passing. I was like, oh no, it's, it's actually that direction. I was like, no, yeah. I'm walking in faith now. <laughs> yeah, it's healing it's like, in faith, and yeah, you don't yeah. realize it, but God puts mm. you on that certain route yeah before she told yeah. me i had walked it different ways mm-hmm. just you know and once i'd learned about it i realized without yeah. knowing wow. it had guided me yeah. in what wow. i needed that's, yeah. that's like you just spoke wisdom there dude. <laughs> coach call <laughs> coach call <laughs> wow that's yeah we need coach up here someday wow, <laughs> we do. you I'm guys really there. do that so but cool. wow. coming back to your question mm-hmm. Connecting and disconnecting on the prayer path. It's leaving what is happening personally behind and focusing on God and God's work. Mm. Mm. That's what it symbolizes to me. And walking the prayer path is basically saying, okay, leave that, focus, connect to God, leave everything behind, knowing the next step is ordered. Mm. The next step is what God wants us to mm-hmm. do, mm-hmm. not what we want to do and how we want to go about things. Mm-hmm. But it's also a relief walking it. It's getting that relief that it's okay, um, it's fine. Yes. So getting stressed and walking the prayer path is like, I'm good again, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's Jeremiah 29, verse 11, right? Yes. For he knows, his, for he knows the plans I have for you. Plans for I have for you. Yeah. You should come uh, and wow. see that. Well, I want to ask you, will you stay for our spec? On yesterday's verse. Let me just think of my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> he looks fine. <laughs> Mom? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, cool. Mom uh, slash director slash... For today... When so we're just going to forget verse yesterday's eight. verse. Are we just going to leave yesterday's verse? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank it falls you. in with what he said, not just honoring each other, but loving each other. I think that falls in. 
I feel a bit lost. I stepped out, <laughs> so I missed the, <laughs> the last half of the session. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Let's get it out. Wow, well, let's get it out, eh? Yes. So, guys, um, yeah, talk with us here on the comments below, and um, Tanya will be viewing the, the comments below and then shouting them out. So, Maybe I should just get my baby. So, yeah. Yes. Yes, get him. I think I'm gonna Pizza swap one. with mm. Veronica. Hey. May I swap with you? Come join us here. Okay. For spec. Thank you so much okay, for spec. having yeah, me. No. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. It was fun. I don't want you to leave. I know. <laughs> Just need to attend that little Bobby. No, I understand. Yeah. I really appreciate you being here Cow. today. <laughs> and um, so, so calm at being thrown in the deep end, you mm -hmm. know? You've learned a lot being here. Yeah. Mama <laughs> says you do. Yeah, it was nice having you here. Thank hey, you so we much. We really appreciate your presence. I hope everybody there, we really appreciate her. And yeah. you, you're the best. Thank now, you. mommy duties are calling, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with that, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm already, uh, I'm already, um, oh. okay, I'll be live, no. not, can I please have, oh, nice, why are we live and we're talking to each other, it's uh, 1 Peter 4 verse 8, but before we go there, oh, you guys have to forgive me, my chest is not good, I'm coughing a lot, that's why I didn't come on yesterday, so. I did that on purpose, you know. For the cherries. <coughs> <coughs> oh, my chest. Yes. So, um, in the wisdom session uh, from Pastor Andrew was pretty amazing. And uh, while, we, while I was standing there listening to it, I kind of remembered... Um, you know, with this whole texting thing of how you talk to people and oh, with the emojis yeah, and stuff. no, not not really emojis, but you know, obviously, you know, you want to talk to somebody and you want to shout at them. You're gonna oh. type everything in capital letters. <laughs> you know, you yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even understand that um, years ago, but that's how people spoke to me, and I, you know, eventually was like, okay, they're shouting at me, but I just want to go somewhere else for this. Um, I was going through my Facebook the other day <coughs> sorry I was going through my Facebook the other day and I was reading a post from many many years ago and as I looked at the post I was like that wasn't nice mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that was kind of horrible mm -hmm. and uh, I realized like that person I never want to be that person again I never want to I never want to say nasty things or I never, you know, I think it was, there was some swearing in it, you know, a post of mine. And I think a lot of people, you know, I wouldn't you, dare do that you now. You me. <laughs> I was a bad girl. Bad, no, I'm joking. Bad, yeah. I wasn't bad, but your know, my language was bad. Yeah. You know, I've literally yeah. been saved from that language, but my language was atrocious. Ooh. You know, I was hanging out with the wrong people and we thought it was pretty yeah. cool to swear, yeah. you know. You know, if you want to express yourself, you're going to use yeah. that kind of language. And I went so far as expressing myself using that kind of language on social media. And I was so embarrassed the other day. Um, it, it wasn't a memory that came up. I think I was sc scrolling through my Facebook looking for something and I was like, wow. did I really say things like that? So I just thank God that he saved me from, you know, um, I think... I have said this before, my two greatest hates in my life, I detest it, I detest it, is racism and unkindness. So Pastor Andrew's uh, wisdom session really
touched home today, you know. Yeah, me too. And uh, I won't say I'm a 10. I'm nowhere close to that. But I'd like to say I'm an 8, you know. Yeah. When it comes to how I treat people, it is extremely important how we treat each other. Um, I always say, you know, never judge someone unless you've walked in those shoes. You know, when you look at um, a homeless guy and he's shoes are torn and his toes are sticking out you know mm -hmm. how many thousands of kilometers did he not have to walk in those shoes how many times was he hungry how many times did he sleep out in the street you know but people tend to want to judge people mm -hmm. tend to want to be nasty and again that was me years ago you know um, I would laugh at people and I would make fun of people and I cannot, I cannot bring myself to do something like that now. You know, that's why I say when I got saved in 2019, I got radically saved. <laughs> radically. <laughs> From everything. You know, yeah. it was, yeah. it was one night, an encounter, gave my life to Jesus and I changed. Yeah. So it is so, so very important on how we treat each other. And you know what gets me the most is, let's say for instance you, Courtney, were nasty to Nobiso or Veronica. I'm gonna take you somewhere and I'm gonna say, Courtney, that wasn't nice. Mm. You, know, I, I, you know, even if people are unkind to each other in front of me, mm. it really hurts. There's, I don't know, there's this kind of, and remember what I was telling you, yeah, you know, whatever you do to people, somebody's always watching, mm. you know, and so, you, you know, you're going to reap what you sow, mm. you know, there's always this, this saying, karma knows your address, even if you don't have a home, <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. so I don't know how you guys felt about the wisdom session, but I thought it was pretty powerful. Mm. Yeah, please go first, go. Me? <laughs> yeah, I felt like I had, I had to like apologize to some people, like let's say my, my brother, my sister, for yeah. being like mean to them. <coughs> and it was like recently, I, it was, I wasn't mean, but I like raised my voice mm. and I got like upset. So I, I just like when I heard the um, session, I was like, oh, like it's hard. Mm. It's hard to love, hard to figure out how people react towards how you treat them mm. and it's little things that you can like snap at and then you sometimes forget about that space yeah. yes and then you're like yeah. with your words yeah. but then but people remember mm. how you make them feel mm. and then if you like think of that every time before you say something i think you will love people more you will be compassionate and mm. more understanding and caring and careful with your words because yeah. <coughs> yeah like you said people are always there's always someone watching but yeah actually god is always watching yeah exactly like, even if nobody's there <laughs> even <laughs> jesus is watching you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's that thought of him watching you always yeah you have to be you have to keep every thought captive mm. before you before you speak yeah sure. it's like it, it also got me off like whoa thinking because mm. yeah. and yeah you know um, speaking of that tanya uh sure you know ref's wisdom today <laughs> it hit me you know about the texting too yeah yeah it, it actually reminded me you know of someone that really plays a really important role in my life so <coughs> so she takes <coughs> and then she's one of those people that like raw texting you know there's no emojis oh. or you know oh. you feelings. don't know how so there's no tone exactly no tone at all so i'm one of those people who actually like is she saying how are you or what does she mean how are you yeah <laughs> like how are you yeah and it, 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 it sometimes it makes me be like you know what i don't know how to respond to that yeah but the way i respond let it be because i'm not gonna respond the way she wants me to respond you understand yeah, yeah. i'm gonna respond in a way of manner and love yeah the moment i do i know if <coughs> 
she's wrong, she's going to respond in a negative way. Yeah, exactly. You could like, exactly. you counteract everything just and by responding right. with love. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> That's why love actually shadows a multiple of sex. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I once learned a very, very valuable lesson taught by somebody in business. Mm -hmm. If you receive an email or a text message that really doesn't uh, make you feel good, you know, the natural response is to retaliate and mm -hmm. send a message back, you know, which is, I'm going to get you even better than yeah. you got me, yeah, you know. Yeah. And she said to me, you type that message or you type that email out, but don't send it. Mm. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, you reread it, and I can bet you you're not going to send it. Yes, yes. that's you true. Know? That time to calm down. And, 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 and that's yeah. how I would <laughs> respond yes. to people, people's messages or their emails. Wow. Give yourself time to think about what you're going to say and mm -hmm. how you're going to make that person feel yeah. before you... It's one of the rules of psychology, right? Huh? It's one of the rules of psychology. I don't, I don't know, it's uh, <laughs> one of the rules of life. <laughs> How you make people no, feel is important. You, if you don't answer Call people there. immediately, it's mm. fine. Yes. You need time. Remember, I not guess. answering it's is also an answer, yeah. you know? Yeah, okay. You know, but rather hold back. Yeah. You know, type your message. Yeah. You know, I find myself a lot of time in, in, in my life where I've, I've written something merely because I need to get it out. Yeah. yeah. But I delete it, you mm. know? Or you sit and you write a letter and you really pour your heart out. Mm -hmm. But then you tear the letter up, you know. Because you don't want to hurt that person. Yeah. The last thing, oh, I, I, I dread to, heart, to, to hurt people. I dread it. You know, you were upset the other day. You know, that broke. I'm always upset. <laughs> <laughs> Which time? Whenever she wants to cry, I, I'm like, Courtney, please don't cry. Yeah, I'm a very I'm, emotional person. Yeah, and this place, no, this place, like, but Mavis it, says it'll get easier the more I'm here. But being confronted by your past, sure, it's going to happen again. <laughs> don't, don't cry, Courtney. Don't cry, Courtney. I won't. We're here for I'm you, Courtney. No, but seriously, like it's just last week this when place you were not so well, beautiful. yeah, last week when you were not yeah, well, it bad. affected me, you know. It <laughs> yeah. affected yeah. me. Oh, texting me all the time, what's wrong? Do you want to talk? We have to talk. I'm like, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when people are not okay, you know. Yeah. So I like that though. Taking a day to respond. I once met a guy, just like in conversation, I'd be like, um, what do you, what did you think of that movie? You know, as an example, mm. and then you'd go. And you'd sit there for like 20 minutes <laughs> in silence. And I was just thinking like, did he hear me? What did he hear? And then you would respond. And I said, what is that about? It's going to make you feel really uneasy. <coughs> and he said, no, uh, I've, I've learned that, you know, water behind you? you don't have to just react to everything. This world makes you rush, 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 you know. Mm. I need answers out of you right now. And often you actually do need more time to yeah. think. So he promised himself basically to give himself that time, to make sure that anything that came out of his mouth was necessary and kind yeah. and true and well thought out. And I just thought, he sure. Thought it for his yeah, but properly yeah. thought, you know. He thought like a whole 20 minutes. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make someone wait 20 minutes mm. for an answer, but I think a lot of us need to just slow down, you know. Yeah. This, Slow down. This it's world so and the this rush. World. Look how cute yeah. Axel looks. Oh. <laughs> um, Axel the God. DJ. DJ. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get uh, to oh, this to this verse because um, this verse is so amazing. It's uh, one Peter four verse eight. But now, I went and read it in the different Bibles. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to start with the King James Version, and then I'm going to go up, even though I wrote it from sure. up down. <laughs> okay. In the King James Version, it says, And above all things, have fervent charity amongst yourself, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Okay. Yeah. Then I went to the Blue Letter Bible. Mm -hmm. It says, above all, maintain constant love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sin." And then I went to the Message Bible, and I absolutely love this version. Most of all, love one another as if your life depended on it. Wow. 
Love makes up for practically anything. That to me was like, oh, wow. Wow, nice wow. I, I, I love that version. But <coughs> oh. So I went and looked up the word fervent. And it's having or displaying passionate intensity. You know, so whether you're looking at it from the Message Bible or the Blue Letter Bible or the King James Version, you know, that love is not just a normal love. That is a intentional, on purpose love. I'm going to love you in like immensely, you know, <laughs> immensely. You know, I often say to my kids, I love you with every fiber that runs through my being because I mean it, you know? I mean every fiber that runs through this body intentionally loves that person, you know? So I just thought it was, I don't know, I just love the Message Bible. I love the way it says, most of all, love one another as if your life depended on it. That's how we should love. And, and, and when, you look at, when you look at the people on the land now, you know, especially the four of us sitting right now and, you know, the people in the tabernacle and our viewers online, look at that person and love them as if your life depended on it. Look at them in, in a completely different way. Okay, not right now. <laughs> you guys look... <coughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> love you, Pastor Samai. Because love makes up <laughs> for practically anything. It covers wow. a multitude of sin. So, we come to the sin to avoid. And I thought about it. So naturally, the sin would would be not loving one another. Mm but as well as not looking past each other's sins. Exposing. Each yeah, exposing other. one another. You know, let's say, for, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to use this. I'm actually going to use this. Um, <laughs> something happened to me last month that really hurt. Um, it was a very, very unkind um, scenario. And... I really battled with it, but last month I had drawn my rent money and I had my full rent money. I, I, I put it in a place and when I went to get it, um, one and a half thousand rand was gone from my rent money. And I, I, I literally, I, I got such a fright when I looked at this and I was mm. like, Where is it? I never touched it. I know for a fact it was in the envelope, you know, because if I, you know, if I have to pay my debts, if it's not electronically and I have to pay it by cash, it's going to be placed in an envelope mm, labeled safe. that's, mm. you know. So I knew it was safe and I knew how much money was in there, but it, 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 it disappeared. I almost felt sick at that moment because... Mm. I had to pay rent the next day, oh you know, word. and I was like, what am I going to do, you know, like, how do I sure. fix this? I had to forgive almost instantaneously. I had to forgive whoever did it instantaneously. Otherwise, I would have become so sick mm. with bitterness with bitterness and disgust. Yeah. Because that I, exactly. because I right. would not do that to anybody. No. I always say, but I wouldn't do that to you. Mm. How is it possible that some people can think like that, that they would actually do things, mm. these things to, a, to, to one another, you know? And that's looking past someone's sin. That's saying no matter how much it hurts you, forgive it and move on. Continue with your relationships. Continue loving people no matter what they do. And uh, my mom often says, you know, you're a far better person than I am, yeah. you know? Not many people have the ability to forgive at that very moment mm, and say, you know difficult. what? It's so difficult. It's not sure. difficult, guys. Listen to the words of Jesus. It's not going to be difficult. You know? It's not going to be difficult. You know, like, um, yeah. 
imagine, I've, I've, I've many times, many scenarios, I've wondered, if somebody had to murder my son, right? Yeah. What would I be able, what would I do? You know? Oh, yeah, okay, I understand. Naturally, I would have to forgive because that's what Jesus says we should do, okay? And I honestly think that I would be able to do it. I honestly think that I would be able to look at him in his eyes and say, I forgive you. And, sure. you know, I think we do ourselves more damage by not forgiving mm. than what the person who actually <laughs> committed the crime exactly is doing to us. Exactly. Yeah, because they, they've moved on. They're going about their lives. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness yeah. is a cancer. <laughs> yeah. It is a cancer that eats you up from inside. That person, whether they have been locked up or whether they're walking, <coughs> sorry, they've moved on with their lives, you know. They might not even feel guilty. They might not even have a conscience about what they're doing. But you sit with that bitterness and that hatred mm, and that anger. Exactly. Um, let me tell you guys a story quickly. Um, there was... Uh, there was this. There's this book called. Um, wh what was that book? Uh, another diamond. No, what's that book? That one about hell. Uh, oh, uh, hey. Yeah, from Mary Kay Baxter. Uh, Divine Revelation of Hell. Hi. I read this book. What did you do? And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Axel. <laughs> it's like baby central. <laughs> so, hello. Hello. There's four cups. He brought us cups. Thanks. Oh, thanks, boy. You can look in that camera and say, hi, world. Hi, world. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hello, and this is Riley. <laughs> the big one and the small one. Maybe we should have uh, the youngsters. Yeah. Sit here next week. Okay. <laughs> Let them do speak. Mom, what is this? What does it say? <laughs> so, so yeah. So, um, you know, she speaks in this book of, you know, going into hell and, um, and her different experiences and the different realms of hell and all of this yeah. but um, she speaks of speaking to Jesus and saying to Jesus like why is this woman in hell and him saying to her that she was a pastor's wife well they were both pastors and she was like but how could somebody like that end up in hell and she said uh, Jesus said to her because her husband had an affair with somebody in the church mm -hmm. and um, they got divorced and she became so bitter that she was unable to forgive her husband and mm -hmm. the mistress so that unforgiveness which was the cancer mm -hmm. drove her to then kill the mistress kill mm -hmm. the husband and then uh, commit suicide Wow. That's how far unforgiveness took her, you know? Mm. And um, that's why I say, look, um, you know, yes, sin, sometimes sin, sometimes sin's not nice. You know, sometimes sin hurts us, hurts other people. But I think loving, loving that person, I think displaying that kind of love, you know, is... is is where it says, um, I think it was in love makes up for practically anything. Mm. Since love covers the multitude of sins, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. You know, it's covering mm. that sin. It's protecting. So I find myself doing a lot of the talking today. Know, Do you guys well, have anything like to say? <laughs> Four things. <coughs> Four things? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Four things. You know, you know, what you have just said, I'm just going to crank it up. I'm just going to crank it up to four points. Okay. First one. 
there's, there's a saying if you steal something you look left and right then you steal <laughs> not forgetting to look on top yes wow because <laughs> when a person steals they be like <laughs> can no one see she me? Jesus is watching you. <laughs> but you forget to look on top and be like, Jesus is watching me all the time. It's just like, I... You know? Point number two. If, if you can't forgive, then you have a disease. Mm. There's a quote saying that if you if if you hate someone, hate is a disease. That doesn't kill only your enemy, but kills you first, mm. then your enemy. Because mm. the moment you hate or the moment you dislike, you put in that kind of spiritual disease in you. And the moment you put a spiritual disease on you, you heavy your heart. Mm. When you heavy your heart, you heavy something that's actually physically to be touched, and that will spread throughout your whole entire body and i think that's what happened because the moment you sp you get spiritually <coughs> hated it's so powerful it's okay. like using witchcraft on, mm. on 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 another level of wind you understand <coughs> what i'm trying to say it's like it's like if i hate veronica right now mm. i'm using witchcraft on her why? Because my heart doesn't allow what she's doing or yeah. what she might contribute yeah. on me. Continue sending her bad vibes. <laughs> Continue having come up, but in a windy way. Yeah. In a spiritual way. You know? Yeah. It's more like being actually cursed in a physical yeah. way. Mm. That's that why I think it ended up being in that kind of form. It actually first headed, headed the woman and then headed, headed the people, right? They were next to her and then her. That's when they all died. Yo. Because she just couldn't forgive. Mm. That's yeah. why they say the power of the tongue. You understand? That's why we need to be cautious on what we execute now. Sharper than a two edged sword. Mm. Sharper than two edged two headed sword. Wow. Third. <sighs> guys. Guys. It's man of wisdom. Guys. <laughs> guys. <laughs> guys, bro. Like I'm, 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 I'm actually like in a dynamic right now. If I like, I kind of feel it. Mm. You understand? You know. Thirdly, caught up in that situation where you just can't fidget or either move. If you neutral, you won't get anywhere. But then if the moment you put in a game, either one in neutral, either one or reverse, you on. It's either you moving yeah. forward or backwards. You can't stay in the middle. Can't stay you in have the to middle. Decide. <coughs> exactly. Wow. The moment you have it on neutral. I um I used to think being neutral was fine. It's not fine. Stay with Satan. <laughs> exactly, because the moment you've been neutral, there's no <laughs> There's no <laughs> god or antidote or any energy, not like any energy, but yeah. a, a, a spiritual energy mm. where it's godly, where it can attack you. Mm. But the moment you be neutral, you're not only securing yourself. No, 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 no. You're not securing yourself. You're doing the direct opposite. If you neutral, you 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 saying you know what? I'm actually here. I'm just a free soul. And the moment you being a free soul, that's where demonic things actually attack okay. you. Mm. That's where actually Satan gets the advantage to take over your mind, your body, your soul, each and everything that runs in you. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what people tend to not actually understand. That's why I don't like being neutral. It's either mm. I'm going forward or backwards. Because yeah. the moment you, you act on it, if you see you going forward, then you're going forward. If you see you going backwards, you need to go forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's that kind of but thing. Just move so you can know which direction you're going just in. Exactly. You need <laughs> yeah. to move. You need yeah. to move. I like that. You need to move. The moment you're being neutral, you're being attacked. <coughs> and when you're being attacked, you're gonna go reverse. And being attacked, reverse. Mm -hmm. And be attacked, reverse. And being attacked, reverse. And and ending up being in that position where that woman was there. 
dying of something that actually should have been said you know what I'm sorry I forgive you I forgive you it's actually heartbreaking it's heartbreaking seeing someone just lose their life like exactly. that exactly because it's I couldn't forgive forgive that's the only oh. thing you just need to do forgive that's all you know oh, that's super easy she she couldn't cover um, her husband's sins mm-hmm. she couldn't forgive yeah it's crazy. and then she ended up being so miserable because of the heavy heart because of the heavy heart can we maybe speak about the promise you know um, the promise I get out of this is when you show compassion Mm -hmm. you receive compassion when you (coughs) show that nastiness and that bitterness Mm -hmm. and that it's what you're going to get back yeah you know so the promise I find in this is love and you're going to f- receive that love. Love's got your back. You know, people people look at you. You might think that, oh, let's use this land for an example. People may think that other people don't watch you. Other people are not observing. That's one thing I've learned about yeah. this land. Everyone's always Somebody watching. is always observing. Yeah. You know. And uh, I remember when I was cooking in the kitchen. I think it was uh, the first kitchen we had. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to step out and deal with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> they just being kids. Yeah. So um, we were we were down in the kitchen, and I remember Pastor Andrew once saying, "You know, the strange thing about that kitchen is I always hear the conversations." Wow. And I was like, don't you ever get caught speaking. <laughs> really? That was back then. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, you, you, are going to, you are going to get exactly like Pastor Andrew says. You know, it's a law. Mm-hmm. It's a law. Mm-hmm. What you sow, you, you shall, shall reap. And I think I want to sow... Um, I, or what I want to reap is is a harvest of love and a harvest of compassion and a harvest of helpfulness and servanthood and um, excellence and you know those are the same things I strive. Last year I I really battled trying to find who I was and where I fit in in True. everything. I really True. did. You know you just get that you get to that point in your life where you just like. Where do I fit in all of this, you know? Mm-hmm. Am I meant to be here? Is this just my... I always saw this as my training boot camp, my spiritual training boot camp, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Until I finally started opening up my ears to the wisdom sessions and finding out who I was and who I wanted to be. And uh, definitely somebody... Um, who wants to sit at the feet of Jesus, who wants to learn. I mean, you can't say that the wisdom sessions that we've had over mm-hmm. the last year have not impacted our lives. No, it has no. a lot. No. It, it has. I mean, even when True. we were down at the, under the tent. Yeah, even those. <laughs> I was just to, Pastor Andrew would be like, <laughs> give his wisdom session, and then I'd be yeah. like, I'd walk away there going, how did he know? Hmm. How did he know I did that? Mm-hmm. How, you know, <laughs> and he's like, I wasn't talking to you. You know, I'm not. He normally says, yeah. I'm not talking to you about you or you or you. Mm. But like at that very moment, you know, you're like, like you're how did he know? You know? Yeah, yeah, I understand. And and and, I just, you know, I just really started absorbing and taking in um, the wisdom sessions and 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 trying to apply what he speaks about um, in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. I don't think he says it because he wants to have fun up here in front of the cameras. (laughs) I think he he really cares about every person in this ministry. He cares about the people on live stream, you know, and uh, I think he wants us to do better, you know. He wants us to be better. Always. So, um, sure. I, w- I want to speak about the example to follow, but maybe give you guys an opportunity because I've I've <laughs> done the command. I want you guys to speak yeah. about the example. 
kind of example do you guys find? What is the example to follow in this verse? Most of all, love one another as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. What is the example? I think by you deciding you are going to love, no matter what, you're going to forgive. I think you can be that example <coughs> that Jesus wants you to be. And oh, are you laughing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> she's like, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think you can be the example because when people see you, they can ask you, why, why didn't you forgive him? Why, why are you loving him for doing that to you? Yeah. And then you say, because I love him. No matter what he does, I love him. Mm. Even if he hits me, I love that person so much. Yeah. Then they will be like, yo, something must be like happening in that person's life that is like unbreakable. And then they will also want that. And then they would realize that you are following <coughs> Jesus. And by <coughs> loving others and covering their sins and not, not opening it up to the world, and showing people, um, they will also be l wanting to follow Jesus and sit at his feet and learn about him and how he teaches. And I think if you decide you want to be that example, you can be that example. Or if you see people, other people um, show, showing love, like Auntie Tanya, you can be the example because you love people so much and like you... You were so worried about Courtney last week. I'm like, that's the person I want to be. Like, I want to be like Auntie Tanya. Like, loving, caring, compassionate. Yeah. And then it makes me want to be a better person. And how Rev also, um, his session, he was talking about uh, love and it hit me. I have to love and forgive. And it, I need to keep reminding myself to do that because... This world, you're so busy, you just react towards um, any situation without thinking sometimes. And it hurts people, and you don't realize that. So I think if you decide you're going to be that example, or you're going to follow someone else's example, um, it will be great, because you're going to turn out to be a better person at the end, if you stick to what you believe in. What did Rev say once? Do you want to be that kind of person that when people leave, yeah. they say, sure, I'm so glad they're gone? Yeah. Or do you want to be the kind of person that says, no, let uh, we want to keep that person, you know? Yeah. Can I, I offer you a better salary? Can I? Yeah. What can I do to make you stay? Be the better person. Um, I want to read um, for the command. I want to read a verse that came up. Um, it's from mm. you may so, uh, I think it might be a bit out of the box love is covering a multitude of other people's sins which yeah. calls for forgiveness from us right <coughs> so <coughs> the, the first time I read it I also saw it like introspectively so if you loved yourself enough you could cover a multitude of your own sins mm. by rectifying. So going and saying sorry. Mm. Going yeah. like repenting, you know. Definitely. Yeah, wow. So you can Courtney. love somebody else, yeah. Yeah. but you can also love yourself enough mm. to rectify relationships. Yeah. 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 I agree 100%. Wisdom. <laughs> Wisdom. Um, preacher got near, yeah? Impartation holder. <laughs> holder. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great example yeah. to follow. Okay. Wow. And then we got to the command to obey. Mm. And Is it love by any chance? <laughs> I think it. <laughs> no, it's more forgiveness might today. Be From forgiveness. the words of Jesus. Mm. This is my command love one another as, as I, I have loved, loved you. you. That is his command. Yeah. So, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you guys. I love, you. I love everybody here. Yeah. I love you. And there. Love you. And there. <laughs> the sense of mine. And there. I, I just. Love you. <laughs>
We love you for the background. Because he's behind your chair. It's like this beautiful music. I can see him like clearly. I'm just like, oh, he plays it so nicely. You know, you you will one day have a husband, and you will one day have a wife. Oh yes. Yeah, obviously. So, so what I want to say is, you know, something that Pastor Andrew taught me one one day in December last year. God gives you children. God gives you a husband and a wife, or a husband or a wife. Yeah. He expects you to give them back to you in a better condition than what you got them. Yeah, that's that's. And that hectic. was like, you know, <laughs> right? when, you know when your brain when just goes snap. <laughs> I got it. You what? Give God gives you a husband, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say, for instance, your husband's broken. You know, give that husband back to God in, in a, a better condition oh, wow. than what you got him. And that's how, where I want to end this session for today. Whoa. You know. I'm mind blown. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, like oh, it's Wisdom. too much. Wisdom. So I thank wow. everybody for being with us on the live stream. I thank you for um, uh, for the comments. And sorry, I, I did see Auntie Vanessa is online. And <laughs> I just hope that you are feeling much better. Yes. Yeah. And we really we miss, miss you. <laughs> come miss back you so now. Much. You know, come back. We miss sure. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we pray for absolute healing yeah, over you and Uncle you. Dick. And, you know, we really are thinking about you. And we'll keep you in our prayers, our morning sessions. Did you guys by any chance talk about the morning sessions, prayer sessions the other day? We haven't got to it we yet. We wanted yes. to in the, the internet. Yesterday the, yeah. the stream kept internet. cutting out yeah. and then today we mm. didn't stop. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Sure. Oh. I just love it because it's so cold outside and when you come here it's like, I don't know if it's the heaters, but like it's <laughs> warm in here. It's like, <laughs> it's so nice. And then you go stand in the heater and it's so nice. And you just feel that it's kind of a love because if there's not heaters, I don't think there will be like people standing. They will be sitting. And tomorrow there's no heaters, guys. We want to see your true <gasps> love. There will be heaters. There will be heaters. I promise. <laughs> no. um, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really great. sorry. Um, I, I've been having this vision since yesterday. Um, I thought I thought it's actually best if I share it with you all and with the viewers out there. Um, I kept on having this vision yesterday. Um, I'm 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 always picturing like these children, you know, poor, and they are actually um, not clothed. <laughs> they they starving guys, mm-hmm. and I've been visioning that since it's from so yesterday, cool. and I'm still visioning it like right now while I'm still talking to you guys, and I'm trying to, so hard to focus. I'm really sorry. I don't know and. I've been asking God, like, okay, just give me the name, okay, of the country, what's going on, mm. you know, and it, it shouted out Zimbabwe. Sure. So, I, guys, it's not sitting well with me, and with my, with my spiritual being, it's not, honestly, I don't mm. want to lie. Mm. So, for the views out there, and you guys, please, can you just pray, mm. you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's it's a vision. I've been having this vision since from yesterday, and I don't actually have visions continuously happening mm-hmm. like this. So most probably it's a sign. So I think we need to just pay attention Pray to it. Pray for the kids in Zimbabwe. Yeah, <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm, it's mind disturbing, honestly, because I'm having this picture. Well, we just so pray cool. that uh, there be supernatural intervention mm-hmm. in Zimbabwe with every child that is hungry, every child that is unclothed, every family living in poverty. We just pray that the heavens open and that there is an abundance of food and clothing and wisdom because we don't have a poverty problem. We have a wisdom problem. So I pray that there's wisdom when it comes to these families who are battling wisdom when it comes to people who are able to help these families who are able to step in and intervene in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. so thank you everybody yes thanks cats 
You are amazing. Thank you, guys. Cat. It was so much fun. With Thanks, you. guys. You're all amazing. This no, Cat, nice you're show. amazing. Cat. <laughs> Everybody's amazing. Yeah. Oh, and Cat, I have to tell you, you know that uh, worship around the world that you set up and I kind of set up? Mm. Well, anyway, we're almost at 400 followers. Wow. We're about four away from 400 followers it's cool. it is cool. growing it's it is cool. growing like crazy it's cool. <laughs> yeah but wow, i thank nice. everybody for being with us and spending the afternoon with us yeah. this is uh, amazing we'll be back tomorrow um yeah we what time yes. 20 to no two. um 20 no to what no yeah so we'll be doing um just one interview tomorrow mm -hmm. And uh, then Pastor Andrew will come up, and um, then the flag dancers take over. Ooh. How lovely. Yes. Yay. And again, we look forward to meeting you guys up on Friday morning for chapel. Yeah. Oh, wow. And Thank yes, you. it's yeah. going to be. That's amazing. Yeah, we love chapel. Let's go. But uh, good, off, uh, good evening. Yes. Have a good evening. <laughs> well, it, uh, you know what? The weirdest <laughs> thing is last, last Wednesday, yeah. we walked out here, and it was pitch black yeah. outside and I was like that <laughs> happened <laughs> I, just I think it's you. pitch black out there yeah, so yeah. good <laughs> evening to everybody and have a beautiful night be blessed day, morning, and whatever you are we love you we love you guys Always. and Lots love yeah. love intentionally love hard and love deeply and love as if your life depended on it yeah okay sure. we love you all guys love you guys let's toodles, let's toodles. It's ending. It's ended.